Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, so in this video, we're going to look at converting the volume that we created in the last video into a series of sheet metal components uh, to basically form a complete chassis body. Uh, so essentially, I thought I'd just start by explaining uh, some of the techniques behind sheet metal manufacturing, just so you guys know what the kind of constraints are uh, with this type of manufacturing before getting started. So essentially, uh, the chassis body here, it's made up of, I think, something like 10 or 12 different components, uh, each of them. Uh, so if I isolate this one briefly, you can see these are all standalone components, and they're all riveted or bolted together to form the complete chassis box model. So essentially, what I mean by sheet metal manufacturing is that every one of these components is made out of sheet material. So if I open up this part, I can just quickly show you. So we can see this part here. And if we click on here, we can click flatten. And essentially what this is going to do, it's going to show us the net shape. So uh, this is aluminium. It would have been laser cut out of aluminium uh, in this shape. And then there's a special uh, folding machine called a press brake that basically comes in here, presses along these lines, and then folds uh, the component into the final shape. So just a quick uh, video. Oops, let's not open up my Monash. Um, so heaps of videos on YouTube would recommend looking into how press brakes work in your own time. Uh, but essentially, um, this is what they look like. So you can put a bit of sheet material in here, a big hydraulic press comes down, presses it and makes the fold. Uh, so pretty simple, but just like knowing how the machines work is always a good start when you're um, trying to design something. So you can see here's all different type of, of shape um, sort of folding dies you can get to do all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a good video just to, to sort of get the idea of how it works initially. So I'll link this one in the description as well, but there's heaps of stuff uh, on the web if you guys are interested. So that's just sort of like a bit of background on uh, the chassis body and how it's made. Uh, so hopefully it's just going to rebuild here. Uh, so yeah, I guess keeping that in mind, there's limitations to what can be made out of sheet material. Uh, because there's only certain folds that you can achieve uh, with a machine, um, which we'll talk about later on in the video. Uh, so, cool, all right. So let's head straight back into our previous model uh, from the previous video, so this one here. Yep, so the first thing we're gonna do uh, with this model here is we're going to uh, delete the shell because we don't need that anymore. And at this point, uh, we'd want to make sure that our geometry is set. So just like I said in the previous video, we probably already have wanted to lay out where all of our interfaces are, where all of our components are going to the best of our ability and frozen that uh, as much as possible before we move on to the next stage. Because as soon as we start converting this solid into sheet metal components, it becomes much harder to change the overall geometry. Um, it can be done, it's just a lot harder at this point. So it's good to get a lot of that original layout stuff done early uh, before you finesse the detail on these parts here. Uh, so, awesome. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do, uh, we're actually gonna create the whole chassis body in one part file uh, using, uh, it's basically it's gonna be one big multi-body part. So uh, it'll make more sense later, but essentially you can actually have multiple bodies within one part file, uh, which is a really handy way to link different parts together if they share the same uh, geometry. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go up to, the first thing we're gonna do is actually copy this body. So I'm gonna go up to the insert button here and I'm gonna go features, move slash copy. And I'm gonna click on the body we wanna copy, click the little checkbox on copy, and then we'll just create one extra copy. So we'll just click okay. We don't wanna translate or rotate the copy at all. We want it to be in exactly the same place. So the reason we do this, so every time we copy this body, uh, this is just a technique that I found worked for the, the chassis body last year. Uh, there's multiple ways of doing this, uh, but essentially every time we create a separate sheet metal component, we want all of those components to reference the original body uh, so that ultimately down the track, if we do need to make a geometry change, we can change the reference body geometry and all of the uh, all of the subparts within that will update uh, to 
match the changes to the reference body. Anyway, long story short, we'll start with the body copy like that. And you can see now we've got two solid bodies at the top here. We've got our reference body, which would have been called something else, but I've renamed it to reference body, and our, our new body. So it's really where you want to start. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to just going to hide the reference body. So we've just got our, our copy body. And we'll start by drawing, uh, let's start by drawing one of the side plates. So, uh, actually, you know what? No, let's do the belly pan. So I'm going to start with a sketch on the top face here. And then we'll go normal too. And we're going to draw some split lines here, which will make sense later. But these are basically going to guide uh, the cut, the edge of uh, the folded part. So it's going to draw it in like this. Um, so we'll go, I think this one was 50. Again, these are just approximate numbers, but uh, actually let's, instead of doing that one, let's go this one here, let's go 42. And then let's go 20 here. 20, and we'll go 45. Pretty sure that's what the back of it looks like. And then what we'll do, I'll just set these ones here to equal, uh, collinear and equal. And then we'll set this one here to 45 also. Like that. All right, cool. So we've got those split lines in there. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna exit this sketch here. We can go up to insert, then we're gonna to go to curve, split line. So it's already selected our sketch. Now we just have to select the face. So I'm gonna select this top face and that will basically split this top face using those lines as guidelines. So that's how uh, we wanna start the part. And then the next thing uh, is we'll convert it into sheet metal. So this is remarkably straightforward. Um, basically, if you right click on this bar up the top here, you can see I've already got a sheet metal option here, but if you don't have that option, you can right click, go tabs and then select sheet metal. And then once you've selected this sheet metal box here, you get a heap of sheet metal options. Uh, and what we're gonna use, we're gonna use the convert to sheet metal option here. So we'll click on this. Uh, we'll see there's a bunch of parameters in here, which we'll get to shortly. Uh, but essentially the key one to start with is we're gonna have two millimeter thick material and uh, two millimeter uh, bend radiuses. So we'll just leave that as is for now. Now we've got to select our starting plane, uh, our starting sort of base, uh, base flange, I guess you call it. So let's just click on the bottom of the body here. And now we can click on bend edges. So I'm going to click on these edges here. And we can see here that it's actually creating a folded part in like this sort of mustard yellow color uh, to follow this out uh, sort of reference body, which is just remarkable. Um, so we can just click on these edges here like that. And we can see that it's it's going up to our, our split line here. So the next thing we want to do, um, we can see how the folded part is sort of, uh, it's outer face is matching the kind of outer face of the reference body. We can flip that. So if I click reverse thickness here, you can see now the new folded part actually wraps around the outside, which is exactly what we want for the belly pan. So that's pretty much all we're going to want for that part. Uh, and then we'll scroll down. Uh, you can change, there aren't any reliefs in this one. The K factor, I believe, is a material factor, um, which will depend on your material, but I'll just left that at 0 0.5 for now. And then we will click OK. And then we can see we have our belly pan part. Very cool. Uh, so the reason why we copy the bodies is because every time we make a part, um, we'll probably edit the body slightly, just like we added those split lines in uh, to create the part. You can click the keep body button here, but every time we make a new body, we're gonna wanna make changes to that body. So every time we make a new part, I just copy the body, uh, the reference body, and then start from that. So what we'll do now, just to keep track of things, let's select all these items here and we'll put them in a folder called belly pan um, and we'll just select it like that. All right, now we'll go up to our cut list here and you can see our bodies now. We've got our new body here 
and we have our reference body. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to turn on our original reference body, and I'm going to turn off our new belly pan. So now we're back uh, to this point again. So at this point, we'll go again, we'll go insert, features, remove slash copy, then I'll click on the body, copy, tick. Okay. All right, now let's turn off our reference body, and now we'll work with the new body. So the next part we're going to make now is going to be our side plate. So I'm just going to start by creating a new sketch on the top here. Uh, lots of different ways to do this. I'm going to just draw in some lines uh, like this. And then I'll probably convert the whole lot here. Essentially, we just want to end up with the, the solid body that we want the uh, convert to sheet metal feature to follow. So I'm going to make this one here 15. I think these will want them to be parallel, so we can shift click on that and add that parallel relation. And then similarly here, okay, that's already horizontal. Cool. All right, then we'll want this to be 24 in thickness. Uh, and then we'll want this here to be, do we want it to be 24? No, let's go 20 actually. Uh, we'll go 20 on here as well. All right, cool. So we, you do have to take into consideration that the, the fold uh, does take up a certain amount of width. So if you have two millimeters of material, uh, the fold uh, will sort of roll over about four millimeters of, of, of sheet. Um, we'll get to that later, but that's something to consider. So once we've sort of drawn in this offset shape here, I'm gonna go back to features, extruded cut. I'm just gonna cut through here. Again, we'll use the through all here. Uh, just because that's handy. And then we'll end up with this shape. So, essentially, um, obviously at this point, I already had in mind roughly uh, how I wanted the side plates to sort of interlock with the main body. Um, there might be different ways of doing this, so you obviously can, can play around with your own ideas. Uh, but this is how I did it initially. So what I'm going to do, I'm also going to create another couple of sketches on the top. Uh, these sketch lines... You'll see how these are used later on, but essentially when this part gets folded, we want to have a gap along these lines here. Um, yep, that'll make sense in a second. So now we'll go to insert, curve, split line, and we'll select the sketch already. We'll select the face, click on tick. You can see it split that face with that little line there at the top. It's quite important. Uh, if you don't add in these, these particular uh, split lines, the folding feature may not, uh, it won't make breaks along these lines. Um, so I will just show you how that works. So if we go to curve split line again, click on that face, split it like that. All right, cool. So that's our, that's the body uh, prepared for the side plate. Now we'll go to the sheet metal menu and then we'll go convert to sheet metal. All right, so with this one, we'll start with this as our base side. We want to fold it over the top here, fold it here, fold it here. And we can basically just keep moving around the model, uh, clicking on all these edges to create our folded part like this. And then we want it to be folded at the back here as well. Like that. All right. So you can see that's worked pretty well so far. Um, what we do need to take into consideration here is, is that when you've got sort of double folds where you're folding it once then folding it again, when it unfolds, you may actually have collisions between, uh, the different flanges and stuff like that. So you, you do sometimes have to take out, um, sort of some material near these corners, like a triangular edge, just so that when the parts unfolded, uh, there aren't any, any collisions basically. Um, and there's material that can be used for both sides. So essentially, let's just lock that in. Uh, you can also see that it's added these really cool kind of cutouts around the corners here where we have multiple folds. Mm -hmm. So those things are called uh, reliefs. Um, so you can do these automatic reliefs, um, which are quite sharp. I think we used, um, you can override this if you want to, or just use the defaults, which is normally fine. I think we used Obround last time. Um, 
just so that they were radiused a little bit, uh, just like that. Um, but yeah, it's not necessarily super critical. Uh, and we'll just click on the tick there. Cool. Uh, so this might just take a quick second, but there we go. So we've got our nice side plate. Now what we'll probably want to do just quickly is uh, we want to just convert this briefly uh, into a flat part just to make sure that it can flatten. And it looks like it can, which is really good. So to do that, you can just click, right click on the body and then do flat, uh, flatten. Um, and it shows you the flattened part like so, which is really cool. So we'll just exit flatten now. We can see we've got our nice side plate. Uh, what we'll do, we'll just create a new folder for all these features and we'll just call it side channel, something like that. Awesome. All right, now let's just turn on our belly pan again. And now we can see, okay, yes, I've made a slight mistake here, but that's okay. So you see how these parts are overlapping currently. So what we can do to change that. So we'll go back into our side channel part. We'll go to our convert solid. We'll click on edit feature. And then remember how uh, we had that option to choose whether or not the, the side part sat in the inside or around the outside of that solid. So we can always reverse the thickness here. And you can see how that now, if I go to side view, sits inside of our belly pan because we set the belly pan to the outside and the side channel to the inside. So we'll just click on tick there. And now hopefully our two parts meet nicely. Looks great. So that's the awesome thing about making these parts within the same part file is that like, look how easy that was and both of our parts match up like perfectly. Uh, that would have been really hard to manage if you were juggling two different sketches across two different parts to make sure that worked, but that was super easy. So cool. All right. So that's that part. So the next part we're going to look at um, is a, a component in the middle that was completely intended for like structural rigidity, especially around the arm mount. So uh, I can't remember what we called this part, but it's just like an inner member, I guess. So again, uh, we'll hide this, uh, the new parts, we'll turn on, we'll show the reference body, then we'll click insert, we'll go to features, we'll go move slash copy. Now we'll click on the body we want to copy, Click tick, OK, and then we will hide our reference body. So here's our new body, back again to where we started. So the next part we're going to make uh, is that internal member. So I'm going to start with a sketch on the top face like this, and then we'll sketch in the internal member. So I'm going to just convert entities on that whole outer contour, and then we will start to draw in this internal shape. So Essentially, this is roughly where we want the internal member to be situated. Um, I think we had a, yeah, so we wanted our, the, the holes of the arm mount to run uh, through the center of this part here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reference the, uh, the, I'm going to put a line through the middle of this. I'm going to set this to construction geometry. And I'm going to set this to 75 millimeters from the center. Uh, and that's entirely because our arm mount is sort of like this. There's four holes in a square pattern. And we want the arm uh, mounting bolts to go through this uh, internal uh, sort of structural member. So that's the only reason why we've positioned it like this. And then what we'll do, we will, let's run this part all the way back here. And I think we have this set to 45 uh, behind that point there. Uh, awesome. That's another great point to bring up there. Um, our initial sketch used the origin as like the central uh, crossbar location. That's super handy now because whenever we have another part that we want to reference to the crossbar location, we can just dimension it directly from the origin like this. So that's a kind of neat thing that we've set up there. Awesome. So let's exit this sketch. And then we'll go to extruded cut. And then we will cut away everything we don't need. So let's go through all there. And then we've got this neat little shape here. All right, so for this next one, uh, we'll again just go to sheet metal, convert to sheet metal. 
We'll start with this side as our base flange and then we'll roll it around just like, um, fold it rather, uh, just like we have with the other parts like that. And then we'll want this to sit inside of that just like it is. And then we can click enter. Cool, so that's all good. Uh, what we did with this part, we also added in a uh, an extra uh, sort of mounting area, I guess you'd call it. Um, not absolutely necessary, but it looks something like this, I think. Uh, just to, It was used, I think, to, uh, to give the lid something to rest on, I believe. Uh, but essentially, it was just 50 by 20, I think. And um, with a 45 in here, like that. Um, and then what you can do, which is quite cool. So if we did want to add something to this part here, you know, we can do a boss extrude on this part like that. The only thing we do need to make sure though, is that when we do a boss extrude on a sheet metal part, we have to be careful about the scope of the feature. So we'll actually have to click on a selected body here. So we want this extruded part to merge with, so you can see merge result is ticked, merge with this specific sheet metal uh, component. So that's a pretty important step there. What that means then is that when we fold this component, uh, sorry, when we unfold this component rather, so if I flatten this, we can see that that extrude uh, followed the unfolding command, which is quite important. So we'll exit flatten now. So that's our, the final shape of our internal part. Uh, again, we'll just select the, the new features that are associated with this part and we'll add them to a new folder and we'll just call this inner channel, something like that. Cool, all right, now we can turn on all of these other parts, maybe except for the reference body to see what we have. Cool, so it's really starting to take shape. We've got our internal member, our side member and our belly pan. So the next thing we're gonna do is we can uh, mirror these two components across the central plane. Uh, so this was one of the reasons why we wanted to make sure that these starting planes were in the center of our part, because we can use those now uh, to mirror things across, which is super handy. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna click on this front plane here, or, or in your case, it might be a different one, but the plane that we want to mirror these two components across. Then we'll go up to this point here and we'll click mirror. So we want to do bodies to mirror, not features, bodies. And then we'll click on these two here. And we can see now that they've got a nice preview there of the two parts that are about to be created. We'll click tick and then sweet. We've got our new uh, sort of chassis body frame. So um, I'm going to end this video here, but in the next video, we will look at completing the top plates and inserting the root holes. Um, thanks for watching everyone.